Well, welcome back uh, to State of the Map uh, 2021. Our next speaker is Frederick Ram. Um, he's going to be talking about with great power comes responsibility. Uh, Frederick's a member of the Data Working Group and a former board member and also an author on a book on the book of OpenStreetMap. So we look forward to his talk and please do remember to put your questions in the chat and we'll hear from Patrick shortly. He's on his way. Thank you. Hello, my name is Frederick and I am going to talk about access tagging in OpenStreetMap. The problems I'm discussing aren't new. They have been with OSM for a while, but with the rising popularity of OpenStreetMap, we have more apps and more websites using OpenStreetMap to lead cyclists or hikers somewhere. And also th the pandemic has played its part because many more people have flocked to these apps to find a nice walk in the vicinity of whatever the lockdown rules allowed them to go. The number of complaints that the data working group has received in the last couple of years has risen sharply. Last year we had about 80 complaints where someone said, please delete this thing from the map. This year is probably going to be more than 100, extrapolating from what we already have. And of course these complaints take a wide range. There will be some where someone says, uh, the owners are not interested in making the location of this building known. And then our response is, well, but we are, please go away. Um, there are others where we clearly act and delete something from OSM, like this path has vanished in the 1964 earthquake. Wait a minute, is OSM really that old? But yes, there, there was a path in OSM that did not exist since 1964. Uh, so, that these are the easy bits, but many requests actually take the form of people are hiking through our garden, please delete this path, or um, people are cycling through the nature reserve, please delete this path. And then apparently when these landowners confront someone or, or state uh, park rangers confront someone uh, using a path they shouldn't be using, people often say, hey, but it's on the app, the app allows it. And this is where access tagging comes in. We don't want to delete all these things from OSM, we just want to properly record uh, who can use them. And there's a well-established tagging scheme that allows us to do exactly that. There's a wiki page that explains all this in its glorious detail. You can map whether you can access something with a snowmobile during a full moon or something. But uh, the most important bits of access tagging are really the access tag itself in the forms of access equals no, access equals yes, or access equals private. That, that means you need permission from the owner or access permissive. That's uh, it's a private path, but the owner is generally okay. Um, there are a couple more like access equals destination or um, access equals agricultural. But, you know, yes, no, private, these are already Ada beberapa macam masalah. Then we have uh, the tetapi access iya atau tidak sangat yang paling banyak dijumpai di uh, tagging highway sama dengan path atau highway sama dengan track. Tracks. Of course, the access tagging is available for a much broader range of things, also for rivers and motorways and things, but you know, paths and tracks are the most, uh, the, the most frequent source of complaints. And at first I want to have a look at how the various websites and applications use Di sini saya akan menjelaskan bagaimana berbagai macam website uh, menampilkan access sama dengan no atau access sama dengan yes. Ini adalah salah satu contoh uh, di mana ada jalan yang memotong kebun. Dan tadi ini adalah highway sama dengan hat. Dan ini adalah uh, tampilan dari peta komut uh, yang cukup populer di Jerman. Jalan ini melewati perkebunan pribadi. Tidak ada informasi bahwa jalan ini tidak dapat dilalui. 
path, which was exactly expected. With armed access tags are generally treated as accessible for pedestrians. So this is how Komoot does it. Let's look at the next contender. This is All Trails. All Trails is uh, uh, very popular in, in the US. You can see how, how the map differs. Dan ini juga dapat dilihat di aplikasi All Trails. Juga populer di Amerika Serikat. Now let's say draw route here. Jika kita uh, menggambar rute melalui jalan ini, akan muncul rute next. Di jalan tersebut meskipun itu adalah uh, aksesnya pribadi. In Europe. Kemudian adalah ada aplikasi lain bernama Alternative. Ya, ini uh, aplikasi ini cukup populer di Euro Eropa. And the last in my comparison is right with GPS. Peta ini sama seperti yang sebelumnya bisa dilalui meskipun ini uh, itu bukan jalan umum. Dan yang terakhir ada right with GPS. Ini khusus untuk pesepeda, tapi juga bisa oleh para uh, bisa, di, bisa digunakan oleh para pejalan kaki, sama seperti sebelum uh, tiga aplikasi lainnya. Selanjutnya ada kasus lain. Tagging yang ditunjukkan ada akses sama dengan no. Namun di description, uh, di deskripsi terdapat uh, peringatan bahwa sangat dilarang melalui jalan ini karena berbahaya. It's a keel on on the coast in northern Germany. Right, let's see what the different routing routing engines do with this. So this is the Komoot. Ya, ini adalah uh, contoh di Komoot. Jika kita memperbesar petanya, terdapat simbol bahwa jalan ini tidak dapat dilalui. Namun di uh, jalur yang tidak boleh dilalui ada beberapa rekomendasi untuk para pejalan kaki. Contohnya bahwa spot ini, tempat ini sangat bagus untuk melihat uh, matahari terbenam dan lain sebagainya. Display these things along a path that, according to OSM, can get you killed if you go there. But yeah, so let's see whether it actually um, looks at these tags for routing. I'll put a start marker here and a destination marker here. Jika dicoba untuk uh, mengatur rute melalui jalur yang tidak dapat di ini atau dengan access tagging sama dengan no aplikasi ini akan membuat rute melewati uh, jalan tersebut tidak artinya tidak dapat melewati jalan tersebut but it still shows the track on the map and it has these things here which isn't uh, isn't the brightest move next all trails um There is no Selanjutnya, all trails. No at least the, the line gets a smaller, smaller dot pattern here. Uh, access, tagging access sama dengan no, ditunjukkan uh, dari tampilan all trails peta seperti uh, garis jalan yang lebih tipis dibanding lainnya, dan ada tulisan private yang artinya pribadi. Private on the map. It's better than nothing, but it's not really correct in this case because OSM has access equals no and not access equals private. Let's see what happens if I try to route along. Yeah, this goes all the way around. Dan jika kita mengatur rutenya, ini akan menunjukkan rutenya tidak akan melalui jalan tersebut, tetapi rute yang dipilih lebih jauh daripada yang ditunjukkan dari aplikasi sebelumnya, yaitu Selanjutnya di interaktif, 
And if I try to uh, across tampilan uh, access tagging sama dengan no proper way for pedestrians uh, bahwa jalannya terlihat sangat tipis dibanding jalan lain yang bisa dilalui dan rute yang dipilih uh, sama seperti rute yang dibuat oleh kamut Let's see what Ride with GPS does. Oh, put a start marker over here and the destination here. Oh, it takes you all the way around, like all trails did. Aplikasi terakhir Ride with GPS. Use this bit here, but at least it doesn't use the dangerous path if accessing was known. Aplikasi ini me Milih rute yang agak mirip seperti aplikasi All Trails, rutenya agak jauh dibandingkan dengan aplikasi kedua aplikasi ini. GPS, you don't even see that this is not accessible on the map. For the access equals private case, I have selected a track that is between Osnabrück and Bremen in northern Germany. It's an interesting situation. Selanjutnya case lainnya. Ada jalan pet off track yang berhubungan langsung dengan jalan utama dan jalan ini mengarah kepada kolam. Dan aksesnya adalah private atau pribadi. Whether this is private access, it's no different from the usual track rendering. However, if you zoom in further, di kamut terlihat bahwa uh, jalan ini tidak dapat diakses dan terdapat simbol oh uh, tidak simbol private, namun sangat kecil dan hanya bisa dilihat jika dilakukan perbesaran. Dan jika kita uh, mengatur destinasi untuk rute, aplikasi ini otomatis tidak menunjukkan uh, jalan tersebut, tidak melalui jalan tersebut. Karena sesuai dengan tagging yang ada di WSM, bahwa akses sama dengan private. Selanjutnya, all trails. As before, the private path is properly Karena akses tagging dari OSM adalah akses sama dengan private, uh, aplikasi ini menampilkan jalan dengan tulisan private atau pribadi dan tidak dapat dilalui. Just like in the private path, it considers a large detour to avoid the private path, but at some point it will send you over the private path and the private path track and not complain. So this is obviously not perfect. Let's see what Outdoor Active do. So you can see that the private part of the track is light gray like we had in the access equals no case. Let's try and road across. Do it. Uh, sama seperti aplikasi di kamut jalan rutenya tidak dapat dilalui. Steadfastly ignores the private path. So that's better, better for the hiker at least. They won't run into trouble with interactive. Now this is ride with GPS. Same area. Yang terakhir, right with GPS. Uh, ya, di aplikasi peta ini cukup sulit untuk uh, menginterpretasi mana jalan uh, yang dikategorikan sebagai jalan private. Dan sama seperti aplikasi sebelumnya, rute yang di rute ini uh, tidak dilalui oleh jalan dengan tagging access sama dengan so Garmin also have a web based routing and map display so you can see that the Garmin uh, routing also takes you around the access equals private bit 
And as for the rendering, it is difficult to see, but it does show a little in italics, it does show a little private along the private track here. So um, Garmin also honors the access equals private tag. Let's now look at a more complicated case. This is a nice little uh, walk. Contoh selanjutnya adalah uh, jalur yang berada di dekat uh, danau. But foot uh, tagging-nya yes. menunjukkan uh, bahwa head so ini atau jalur ini adalah dengan tagging access sama dengan no akan tidak dapat diakses. Tapi ada tagging lain yaitu foot sama dengan yes yang artinya bahwa jalan ini tidak dapat diakses selain oleh para pejalan kaki. Let me try pedestrian routing start here go here. Dan di kamu uh, ketika kita mengatur destinasi untuk rute pada jalan ini, rutenya menunjukkan jalan dapat dilalui oleh para pejalan kaki atau untuk hiking. Namun untuk uh, pesepeda, jalur ini tidak dapat dilalui. If you try very hard, it actually does use it for cyclists, so. So maybe not the best result. It should really refuse doing that altogether. But you have to try very hard because as soon as you give it a chance to avoid anything, it will. Next up, all trails. One thing that you see right away is it has marked uh, path, all trails. Uh, part of the path as private here. Dan jalan ini uh, dikategorikan sebagai private meskipun uh, para pejalan kaki masih bisa melalui. Hal ini bisa hal ini bisa menimbulkan uh, kebingungan. Dan jika kita mengatur destinasinya. Uh, Rute ini tidak dapat dilalui meskipun rute ini tidak dapat dilalui bukan rute dapat dilalui tapi bukan rute utama yang direkomendasikan. Doesn't doesn't that you go there with a bike, which is correct. Even if you try to force it by giving it no other choice, it doesn't let you use that. That's good. Let's see what the folks at Outdoor Active do. So there's no discernible difference on the map for this. Access equals no for the... Yes. So I'm getting the Outdoor Active. Start pointing at And yes, it uses the path. So Rute ini dapat dilalui oleh para pejalan kaki atau dengan uh, memilih rute hiking. Namun jika memilih uh, rute baik atau untuk sepeda, jalan ini tidak dapat dilalui. So no, that's not good. It seems to use the access equals no foot equals yes. Namun di beberapa uh, segmen jalan ada jalan yang dapat dilalui oleh 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 para sepeda. Outdoor active actually refused to use that. Last thing in the list again, right with GPS, uh, with the pedestrian profile at first. Let's see, uh, uses the path. That's good. And uh, let's change this to the cycling profile. That seems okay. Then the uh, right with GPS. Jika memilih rute uh, untuk pesepeda tidak dapat dilalui dan untuk rute para pejalan kaki rutenya bisa dilalui. Over and this has access equals unknown, and the mapper has actually made a note saying, "Oh, you can theoretically walk here. I'm not sure if this is allowed." So access equals unknown. Let's see what the different engine, different engines make of that. 
Selanjutnya contoh uh, jika akses sama dengan anon atau tidak diketahui bahwa akses ini bisa dilalui atau tidak. And let's me use it for pedestrians as well. So Komoot doesn't care for access equals unknown. Let's see what else. Dan di Komoot uh, untuk para untuk rute hiking atau pendaki dan rute untuk hiking atau uh, pesepeda rute ini tidak dapat dilalui. So all trails doesn't care for access equals unknown either. Dan hal ini sama berlakunya seperti uh, di aplikasi All Trails. Dan juga alternatif. Yeah. This bit is without access restrictions and the bit over here is equal access equals unknown, so it actually doesn't let us use it. Um, Let's see if cycling makes a difference. No, not for cycling either. So Outdoor Active does not like access equals unknown. This is right with GPS. Let's see what they do. Start here. Go. Selanjutnya dari uh, right with GPS. Let us use it for hiking and, and cyclist. Yeah, it leads me another way around, but this is just the white, the, the, the cost. Sama seperti sebelumnya, rutenya tidak tersedia. Right, let's see what OSM routing engines do. Grafhopper and OSRM from here to here. OSRM lets you walk along it. Grafhopper also lets you walk. And for cycling, OSRM lets you cycle, and Grafhopper, yeah, Grafhopper doesn't like the path, but lets you cycle as well. So all OSM routing engines, or standard OSM routing engines, actually let you use an access equals unknown path. Here's an overview slide that has about all the results. Ini adalah uh, kesimpulan dari beberapa aplikasi yang digunakan dalam percobaan ini yang ada Komoot Hot Trails, Outdirective, dan Redwood GPS. Uh, I really need the, the apps and websites to show when something is access equals private, uh, show that clearly so that people don't get the wrong idea when they see, oh, I'm on this path, looks okay. And it would also be nice if uh, apps could really ignore the uh, access equals unknown bits, because if the access isn't known, then maybe I shouldn't leave people there. Now that we've seen how the access tags are actually used, let's look at how many there are in OpenStreetMap. For these statistics, I have looked at the total length of tracks and paths, not the number of ways. Dan jika lihat berapa banyak uh, tagging seperti itu di OpenStreetMap, big percentage of the actual way path network is covered with access tags. Dan hasilnya ada berapa jutaan, ada di jutaan kilometer di OSM uh, yang terdiri dari access tag. Dan paling banyak ada di tag. Among countries that have more than 50,000 kilometers of tracks and paths, the UK has the best ratio. Negara, uh, jika ada presentasi negara uh, yang memiliki access tagging, Inggris memiliki access tagging terbanyak di antara negara-negara lainnya. What do we do if there are no access to If I write a routing engine or an app, Jadi, uh, bagaimana jika tidak ada access tagging? Oh, yes, or atau no. Apakah kita boleh melalui atau tidak? There's a wiki page that explains all the, de all the details. Uh, it has uh, an overview, uh, a global set of defaults, and then it has individual defaults recommended. Di wiki page-nya dijelaskan tentang access tagging. Is if something is 
a highway equals path and has no access tags, can you use this for art? Jika kita menemukan beberapa contoh seperti apakah area ini bisa dilalui atau tidak, namun hal tersebut bisa berbeda-beda di tiap negara. And I think no one really uses it. So there's some some work that could be done here. Um, for the UK, if you scroll down to the UK, it actually says the default should be uh, access equals yes or or uh, cycling and hiking allowed on highway equals path. And I have it on good authority that this is actually not right. And if you have a path in the UK, you should assume it's access equals private if no public right of way is mapped. Now, as you know, in OpenStreetMap, our approach is iterative. You can add something, add whatever you know, and someone else adds more details, and that's how the map grows. But as we have seen, the default access assumption for path, and most often also for track, is that you can go there, you can walk there or cycle there. This means that whenever you have... Siapapun bisa menambah uh, informasi di OpenStreetMap untuk meningkatkan ke tingkat detail di peta yang ada di OpenStreetMap. So, Kamu harus dipastikan jika informasi tersebut benar. But with the default assumption of everyone being well, if there's a path and you can use it, there's a problem. There is a tag I mentioned that earlier. It's called access equals unknown. It's very rarely used, and uh, apps don't actually honor that at the moment. And it doesn't come natural to us as mappers, because normally if you don't know something, you just don't map it. Like if you map a building and you don't know how high it is, you don't put height equals unknown, you just put no height, and then someone else can add that. So maybe we should think about using an explicit access equals unknown so that we don't fall into this trap of you know no access is specified so it must be legal as if all these issues weren't bad enough uh, there's more trouble around the corner for example here in this military area there's a couple of tracks ini salah satu contoh yang ada di area militer ada banyak State parks, nature reserves, and so on. Um, it's often guesswork to find out whether you can use them or not. Wrapping up. Yeah, like uh, in hal ini bisa menimbulkan kebingungan bahwa apakah jalan ini bisa dilalui atau tidak. Proper access tags wherever you. Obviously, if something is a private path or track. Uh, untuk para pemerintah jika mengetahui bahwa jalan ini terdapat akses yang jelas tertinggi bisa dilalui atau tidak dilalui baiknya uh, jika menambahkan informasi tersebut agar tidak menimbulkan uh, kebingungan untuk para pengguna uh, dan Uh, pertimbangkan lagi untuk menggunakan uh, access sama dengan unknown karena itu akan menimbulkan kebingungan lainnya dan lebih bertanggung jawab lagi dari uh, jika memetakan area yang Anda petakan dan untuk para komunitas alangkah itu jika mengembangkan dan mendiskusikan uh, akses ini tagging uh, dan alangkah baiknya untuk membuat dokumen yang jelas karena uh, masa ini di setiap negara bisa berbeda-beda respect the existing access tags. If something is access equals private, don't send people along. Dan untuk para pengembang atau developers, uh, mohon untuk menghargai access tagging. Jika aksesnya adalah private, mohon untuk tidak menunjukkan rute tersebut. 
not send people there. Or if you don't want to do that, at least um, honor the access equals unknown. Also, put it on the map. If Dan juga tolong uh, munculkan atau perlihatkan akses di, di peta jika misalnya akses jalan tidak bisa dilalui tolong dimunculkan simbol tidak dapat dilalui dan lain sebagainya so that when we add something to the map we know how is this going to look in all trails and how uh, is all trails going to use these tags that i put in to restrict access if necessary doesn't mean that the community will uh, adopt to whatever the routing engines are doing it that would probably be wrong but at least it can't hurt to know what the effects are thank you for listening And I hope that uh, this talk does its part to reduce the number of problems that are reported with OpenStreetMap. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Frederick, for for that uh, interesting talk about routing and responsibility. I always say people before data and communities before data, at least I do in my work. So I think it's a really good demonstration of when you're mapping with routing, um, you certainly have demonstrated why it's important in respecting that. So you do have a lot of questions, Frederick. So I, I did ask people to vote those up um, and do take a copy of them because I'm sure that you're going to have to ask some of them later. So the top voted question for you was, um, and this is from OpenStreetMap Belgium, I believe. Um, um, They've had a few apps to improve private rendering. Some of them are OSM and Windy Maps didn't agree. What can we do more about the kind of collisions between all these different apps and the ways that they work? Over to you, Frederick. I think um, you can you can of course always try and talk to them and have more people try and talk to them. But it these these apps and websites will probably listen most to their own customer base or their own target group mm -hmm. so uh, if talking to them doesn't work then maybe uh, we should try talking to their users and basically uh, tell or, or seek a dialogue with like users of windy maps so that they uh, go to their map provider and say hey you know your map is low quality because it has recently let me down a path that I wasn't allowed to use. Mm -hmm. um, I would that that's something I would try. Of course, it depends on who the customer base is and and whether that's viable or not. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for that answer, Frederick. So we have another one. Um, this is one of the things where many countries have small local differences. Should we have a machine readable by country rules on how to interpret restrictions? Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> it's it, it's certainly some something interesting and uh, and yesterday Sarah touched on a very similar thing in her talk about nominatum when she said that uh, by leaving that open we're basically uh, um, letting app developers or, or third parties uh, make their own body of knowledge and rules about uh, country defaults and then that lives outside of OSM and these people use it to sort of enrich their data but we don't have that value in OSM which is something we don't like. So yes we should definitely work on that, we should definitely uh, discuss what uh, countrywide defaults should be or regional defaults should be and find a way to encode that. I am not sure if the OSM database itself is the right place. I know mm -hmm. that uh, people sometimes do things like tag, for example, uh, with uh, same thing with speed limit defaults. How fast can you go on a motorway in France? Sometimes people tag that on a on the France boundary relation as a kind of countrywide defaults. Interesting concept, but maybe not totally well thought out and this is we have to find a, a good way to do it maybe it needs another place to live this information but we should definitely mm -hmm. connect collect that and store it somewhere and just in terms of if it was to happen would that be within the dwg or would it happen somewhere else like if people wanted to work on that kind of concept where would they work with an open stream app it's certainly not the dwg because the dwg only pops up when there's a conflict and, and this is mm -hmm. not, not not a big 
issue at the moment. So I, I would hope that people organize uh, on the mailing list or something and say, okay, uh, let's sort of e either make a tagging proposal and discuss that or say, you know, let's collect ideas on the wiki page or, or something like the usual, uh, the usual things that the community uses to uh, find consensus. All right, so, so everyone's got some homework to do something on the wiki page, um, that way it's documented, and to join the data working group. Um, that was my way to pitch for the data working group. It wasn't very slick, but I tried, Frederick. Um, so your talk is focusing on routing, but what about rendering? Even if the main OSM, OSM org style is not clear with red dashes are private, should OSMF org be leading the way? So how should we change? So um, OSMF currently, so the ideal map would have a selector where you can say, I am a cyclist, I am a pedestrian, I am a, a motorist, and it would then show the access accordingly. Currently, uh, OpenStreetMap does show private access um, or access equals no by uh, giving, giving the paths or, or roads either a, a dash pattern or painting them in a very light color. But it cannot differentiate between a situation that I showed in my talk where you have like access equals private, but foot equals yes or something like that. And that would require a, a mechanism on the map where you say, I am a pedestrian. And then it would basically show those paths as normal paths because you can use them. And that would require, uh, we can probably only do that once we have vector tiles on openstreetmap.org because then we can provide a number of different map styles at the same time which would currently be too taxing for the infrastructure now i know there's a lot of questions here and a lot of comments i, I should say that i think we, this is our last question um, and i'll have to check with my timing here but um do you know what apps will do with uh, bicycle equals dismount I don't. Um, I know that a couple of bicycle routing engines will uh, consider any anything that has bicycle equals no, uh, mm -hmm. but foot equals yes, as, okay, you can go here if you push your bike. Because in most jurisdictions, someone pushing a bike is legally a pedestrian. So even if it says you cannot cycle here, you will also you will usually be allowed to push your bike. So many apps do actually by default interpret a combination of bicycle equals no and foot equals yes as bicycle dismount and will actually tell you in the routing description, okay, you have to push your bike here for like 500 meters or something. But I don't have an overview of who exactly does that. Okay, well, there, there's some other homework for somebody else. Um, if you are not watching li this live thing, there's been some interesting chats around taxonomy and other things that we can talk about in terms of routing and privacy. Um, so that's why you need to come to the live event if you can. So I'm gonna ask the last question. I'm just gonna take the liberty on that one. Um, when there is already access, when there are already access restrictions on the gate crossing the path, should the access restriction be added to the highway too? For example, military, which is always it's an example that you brought up earlier. Please go ahead. Yeah, Patrick. it's uh, th th that's a difficult one because we often say in OSM, you know, it's it's like with the is in tag. Should every place that is in Germany be tagged is in Germany? And we say no because that's trivial to find out from the from the boundary. And many people say it is just as trivial to find out that a certain path is inside a, say, uh, a, a military area or a, a nature um, conservancy area or something, and therefore shouldn't be, should by default be uh, not usable. But um, as we don't have hard and fast rules on that, I would always suggest to just duplicate things a little and just put access equals private or something on the path as well. Even if that duplicates information and it's it's not really nice from a data modeling point of view, you would say you'd like to say, okay, this information is in one place and in one place only, but you know, a little redundancy doesn't hurt and even helps us in sort of, you know, if, uh, even helps us um, finding errors. If we say, okay, the, here, there's a gate here that is marked as if everyone can pass, but then behind that there's a street that says it's not available for cyclists or something, then we can say, okay, there's a problem here. Maybe someone has to look at that. So um, even if it's not, even if you don't like it, I would suggest just add the information twice. It doesn't hurt. 
That's right. So, um, so Frederick, thanks so much for answering rapidly all those questions. There's a couple more hanging questions, but I know we need to end and I want to give you a closing thought a moment. So for those of you that still have questions for Frederick, do you know that there's an after talk chat space in the platform where you can go and ask Frederick questions and I encourage you to have a chat. And um, Frederick, just one last question for me. How can people, um, how can people learn about the data working group? What, what, how can they get involved? Um, th there's a th there's a page on if if you go to the osmfoundation.org uh, site, there's a, a chapter about the data working group, and that also has a couple of uh, uh, information about um, information for prospective members, like what what do we expect, how much work is it going to be, what I know, what am I going to be doing, and so on. And um, if if you're interested in that kind of work, uh, then the data working group is happy to hear your application. Wonderful. Okay, so thanks again, Frederick. Uh, I don't know if we can hear you clapping. If we were in a room together, we would. And I didn't create any kind of clapping platform near my computer. So with that, I'm going to close this session and just say thanks again for all your comments and for your questions and for Frederick for preparing the talk on uh, having more responsibility in how we do routing and work. So thank you. Okay, bye-bye.